Hare Krishna everyone. Welcome back to the daily readings <clears throat> of Srila Prabhupada's books. We hope you're all out there happy and safe in these troubled times. Um, we're going to get right into it tonight. We're a little bit late. Uh, and we hope you're all happy and well and safe. In due course, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur gave this beautiful uh, poetic glorification of the Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. He said, in due course, Maha Pralaya, devastating floods, <clears throat> will inundate the entire universe. If you attempt to survive by swimming in that deluge, then do not neglect to take hold of Bhagavad Gita, Srimad Bhagavatam, and Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. Or, if you cannot hold all three, then release Bhagavad Gita. If necessary, you may also relinquish Srimad Bhagavatam, but under no circumstances release your hold on Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita. For if this one book remains, then the flood can do no actual damage. Because after it has subsided, the message of Shastra can be revived from Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita alone, it being the essence of all Shastra. Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jai Dvaita Chandra Jai Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jai Jai Sri Chaitanya Jai Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Jaya Jaya Sri Chaitanya Jaya Nityananda Jaya Dvaita Chandra Jaya Gaura Bhakta Vinda Okay, we reached chapter 20. <clears throat> We've heard about Sanatana Goswami's adventure being arrested and then getting out of jail by bribing the jailer. Now he's come to <clears throat> Benares. <clears throat> he also almost got killed by this hotel keeper and uh, because his servant took gold coins with him. And anyway, the hotel keeper, there was a palmist there, and he knew by his mystic uh, power that Sanatan and uh, Ishan were carrying gold coins, so they decided to kill them and take the coins. But because Sanatan was very, very intelligent and very experienced as a chief minister for a, a, a ruler, he understood that they, he was being too nice to him, this hotel keeper. So he went to him, asked Ishan if he had anything valuable. He admitted he had seven gold coins, which he actually had eight. And he brought those coins, Sanatan brought those coins to the hotel keeper. And he agreed. And he said, thank you very much. I was going to kill you for these, but you've saved me from this sinful activity. Actually said, I won't take the coins because I'll just do it in charity. He said, no, no, no. If you don't kill me for them, someone else will. So please just take the coins and take me over there. So he did. So now he's come to Benares and uh, he's met Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And we're about to hear the teachings of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatan Goswami. We're beginning with text 73, chapter 20, Madhulila, Sri Chaitanya, Charitamrita. <clears throat> After washing his face that I mentioned to him yesterday, uh, imminent, and so I gave it to him. Text 73, Madhulila, 20th chapter, Sri Chaitanya, Charitamrita. After washing his feet, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sat down for lunch. 
he asked Tapan Mishra to supply Sanatan Goswami lunch also. Tapan Mishra then said, Sanatan has some duty to perform, therefore he cannot accept lunch now. At the conclusion of the meal, I shall supply Sanatan with some remnants. After eating, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu took rest for a while. Tapan Mishra then gave Sanatan Goswami the remnants of food left by Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. When Tapan Mishra offered Sanatan Goswami a new cloth, he did not accept it. Instead, he spoke as follows. If you want to give me some cloth according to your desire, Please give me an old cloth you have used. 78. When Tapan Mishra gave Sanatan Goswami a used dhoti, Sanatan immediately tore it into pieces to make two sets of outer cloth and underwear. 79. When Chaitanya Mahaprabhu introduced the Maharashtrian Brahmana to Sanatan, the Brahmana immediately invited Sanatana Goswami for full meals. 80. The Brahmana said, My dear Sanatan, as long as you remain in Kashi, please accept lunch at my place. 81. Sanatan replied, I shall practice the process of Madhukari. Why should I accept full meals in the house of a Brahmana? Purport. The word madhukari comes from the word madhukara, which refers to bees collecting pollen from flower to flower. A madhukari is a saintly person or a mendicant who does not accept a full meal at one house, but begs from door to door, taking a little food from each householder's place. In this way he does not overeat or give householders unnecessary trouble. A person in the renounced order may beg but not cook. His begging should not be a burden for the householders. The Madhukari process is strictly to be followed by a Babaji, that is one who has attained the Paramahamsa stage. This practice is still current in Vrindavan and there are many places where alms are offered. Unfortunately, there are many beggars who have come to Vrindavan to accept alms, but not to follow the principles of Sanatana Goswami. People try to imitate him and lead an idle life by practicing Madhukari. It is almost impossible to strictly follow Sanatana Goswami or Rupa Goswami. It is better to accept food offered to Krishna in the temple than to try to imitate Sanatana Goswami and Rupa Goswami. Yuktahara viharasya, yukta chaitasya karmasu, yukta swapna babodasya, yogo bhavadi dukaha. He who is regulated in his habits of eating, sleeping, recreation, and work can mitigate all material pains by practicing the yoga system. Bhagavad Gita 6, 19, 17. The ideal sannyasi strictly follows the ways practiced by the Goswamis. Text 82 Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu felt unlimited happiness to observe Sanatana Goswami's strict following of the principles of sannyas. However, he repeatedly glanced at the woolen blanket Sanatana Goswami was wearing. Text 42, 82 because Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was repeatedly glancing at this valuable woolen blanket, Sanatana Goswami could understand that the Lord did not approve of it. He then began to consider a way to give it up. 84. Thinking in this way, Sanatana went to the bank of the Ganges to bathe. While there, he saw that a mendicant from Bengal had washed his quilt and spread it out to dry. 85. Sanatana Goswami then told the Bengali mendicant, My dear brother, 
please do me a favor. Trade me your quilt for this woolen blanket. 86. The mendicant replied, Sir, you are a respectable gentleman. Why are you joking with me? Why would you trade your valuable blanket for my torn quilt? 87. Sanatan said, I am not joking. I am speaking the truth. Kindly take this blanket in exchange for your torn quilt. Saying this, Sanatan Goswami exchanged the blanket for the quilt. He then returned to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu with the quilt on his shoulder. Text 89 When Sanatan Goswami returned, the Lord asked, Where is your woolen blanket? Sanatan Goswami then narrated the whole story to the Lord. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu then said, I have already deliberately considered this matter. Since Lord Krishna is very merciful, He has nullified your attachment for material things. Why should Krishna allow you to maintain a last bit of material attachment? After vanquishing a disease, a good physician does not allow any of the disease to remain. 92. It is contradictory to practice madhukari and at the same time wear a valuable blanket. One loses his spiritual strength by doing this and one will also become an object of jokes. Text 93 Sanatana Goswami replied, the Supreme Personality of Godhead has saved me from the sinful life of material existence. By His desire, my last piece of material attraction is now gone. 94. Being pleased with Sanatana Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu bestowed His causeless mercy upon Him. By the Lord's mercy, Sanatana Goswami received the spiritual strength to inquire from him. Very interesting point. You need spiritual strength to inquire from your spiritual master or from Krishna. 95 and 96. Formerly, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had asked Ramananda Roy spiritual questions, and by the Lord's causeless mercy, Ramananda Roy could properly reply. Now, by the Lord's mercy, Sanatan Goswami questioned the Lord and Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally supplied the truth. 97. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, personally told Sanatan Goswami about Lord Krishna's real identity. He also told him about the Lord's conjugal love, his personal opulence, and the mellows of devotional service. All these truths were explained to Sanatan Goswami by the Lord Himself out of His causeless mercy. 98. Putting a straw in His mouth and bowing down, Sanatan Goswami clasped the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and humbly spoke as follows. 99. Sanatana Goswami said, I was born in a low family and my associates are all low-class men. I myself am fallen and am the lowest of men. Indeed, I have passed my whole life fallen in the well of sinful materialism. Purport Actually, Sri Sanatana Goswami belonged to a Brahmana family because he belonged to the Saraswata division of the Brahmanas and was well cultured and well educated. Somehow or other, he accepted a ministership in the Muslim government. Therefore, he had to associate with meat eaters, drunkards, and gross materialists. Sanatana Goswami considered himself fallen, for in the association of such men, he also fell victim to material enjoyment. Having passed his life in that way, 
he considered that he had wasted his valuable time. This statement about how one can become fallen in this material world is made by the greatest authority in the Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. Actually, the whole world is presently fallen into material existence. Everyone is a meat eater, drunkard, woman hunter, gambler, and what not. People are enjoying material life by committing the four basic sins. Although they are fallen, if they simply submit themselves at the lotus feet of the Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they will be saved from sinful reactions. Text 100 I do not know what is beneficial for me or what is detrimental. Nonetheless, in ordinary dealings, people consider me a learned scholar, and I am also thinking of myself as such. Text 101 Out of your causeless mercy, you have delivered me from the materialistic path. Now, by the same causeless mercy, please tell me what my duty is. Kehami, Kene Amaya Jari Tapatroi, E Hanahi Jani, Kimane Hetohoi. Who am I? Why do the threefold miseries always give me trouble? If I do not know this, how can I be benefited? Purport The threefold mis material miseries are miseries arising from the body and the mind, miseries arising from dealings with other living entities, and miseries arising from natural disturbances. Sometimes we suffer bodily when we are attacked by a fever, and sometimes we suffer mentally when a close relative dies. Other living entities also cause us misery. There are living entities born of the human embryo of eggs, perspiration, and vegetation. Miserable conditions brought about by natural catastrophes are controlled by the higher demigods. There may be severe cold or thunderbolts or a person may be haunted by ghosts. These threefold miseries are always before us and they entrap us in a dangerous situation. Padam, padam. Yad vipadam. There is danger in every step of life. 103. Actually, I do not know how to inquire about the goal of life and the process for attaining it. Being merciful upon me, please explain all these truths. 104. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Lord Krishna has bestowed his full mercy upon you so that all these things are known to you. For you, the threefold miseries certainly do not exist. 105. Since you possess Lord Krishna's potency, you certainly know these things. However, it is the nature of a sadhu to inquire. Although he knows these things, the sadhu inquires for the sake of strictness. 106. Those who are eager to awaken their spiritual consciousness and who have thus unflinching, undeviated intelligence certainly attain the desired goal of life very soon. Purport. This verse, quoted from the Naradiya Purana, is found in the Bhakti Rasamrita Sindhu 1 2 103. Text 107. You are fit to propagate the cult of devotional service. Therefore, gradually hear all the truths about it from me. I shall tell you about them. 108 and 109. It is the living entity's constitutional position to be an eternal servant Krishna. Because he is the marginal energy of Krishna and a manifestation simultaneously one with 
and different from the Lord, like a molecular particle of sunshine or fire. Krishna has three varieties of energy. Purport. Srila Bhaktivinoda Thakur explains these verses as follows. Sri Sanatana Goswami asked Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Who am I? In answer, the Lord replied, You are a, a pure living entity. You are neither the gross material body nor the subtle body composed of mind and intelligence. Actually, you are a spirit soul, eternally part and parcel of the Supreme. Of the Supreme, eternally part and parcel of the Supreme Soul, Krishna. Therefore, you are His eternal servant. You belong to Krishna's marginal potency. There are two worlds, the spiritual world and the material world. You are, you are situated between the material and spiritual potencies. You have a relationship with both the material and the spiritual world. Therefore, you are called the marginal potency. You are related with Krishna as one and simultaneously different. Because you are spirit soul, you are one in quality with the Supreme Personality of Godhead. But because you are a, a very minute particle of spirit soul, you are different from the Supreme Soul. Therefore, your position is simultaneously one with and different from the Supreme Soul. The examples given are those of the sun itself and the small particles of sunshine and of a blazing fire and the small particles of fire. Another explanation of these verses can be found in Adi Lila, chapter 2, verse 96. 110. Just as the illumination of a fire, which is situated in one place, is spread all over, the energies of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Parabrahman, are spread all over this universe. Purport. This is a quotation from the Vishnu Purana, 1.22.56. One twelve, one eleven. Lord Krishna naturally has three energetic transformations and these are known as the spiritual potency, the living entity potency and the illusory potency. One twelve. Vishnu Shakti Pada Prokta Chetra Gyakya Tata Pada Abhidya Karma Sangyanya Tritiya Shakti Ishyate. Originally, Krishna's energy is spiritual, and the energy known as the living entity is also spiritual. However, there is another energy called illusion, which consists of fruitive activity. That is the Lord's third potency. Purport. This is a quotation from the Vishnu Purana, 6761. For further explanation of this verse, refer to Adi Lila, chapter 7, verse 119. <clears throat> Text 113. All the creative energies which are inconceivable to a common man exist in the Supreme Absolute Truth. These inconceivable energies act in the process of creation, maintenance, and annihilation. O chief of the ascetics, just as there are two energies possessed by fire, namely heat and light, these inconceivable creative energies are the natural characteristics of the Absolute Truth. Purport. This is also a quotation from the Vishnu Purana. <clears throat> Text 114 O King, the Chetragya Shakti is the living entity. Although he has the facility to live in either the material or the spiritual world, 
He suffers the threefold miseries of material existence because he is influenced by the avidya, nation's potency, which covers his constitutional position. Purport This and the following verse are also quoted from the Vishnu Purana 6.7, 62 and 63. For an explanation, see Madhya Leela, chapter 6, verses 155 and 156. Text 115. This living entity, covered by the influence of nations, exists in different forms in the material condition. O King, he is thus proportionately freed from the influence of the material energy to greater or lesser degrees. Text 116. Apariyam itvasyanyam prakritim vidime param jiva bhutam mahabaho yayidam daryate jagat. Besides these inferior energies, O mighty armed Arjuna, there is another superior energy of mine which comprises living entities who are exploiting the resources of this material, inferior nature. <clears throat> Purport This is a verse from the Bhagavad Gita 7.5. For an explanation, see Adi Lila, chapter 7, verse 118. Text 117 For getting Krishna, the living entity has been attracted by the external feature from time immemorial. Krishna Bhuli, Krishna Bhuli se Jiva Anad Bahirmukha. Krishna Bhuli se Jiva Anadi Bahirmukha, Atayeva Maya Tari, Deya Sang Sada Dukha. Forgetting Krishna, the living entity has been attracted by the external feature from time immemorial. Therefore, the illusory energy Maya gives him all kinds of misery in this material existence. PURPORT When the living entity forgets his constitutional position as an eternal servant of Krishna, he is immediately entrapped by the illusory external energy. The living entity is originally part and parcel of Krishna and is therefore the superior energy of Krishna. He is endowed with inconceivable maidut energy that works inconceivably within the body. However, the living entity, forgetting his position, is situated in material energy. The living entity is called the marginal energy because by nature he is spiritual, but by forgetfulness he is situated in the material energy. Thus, he has the power to live either in the material energy or in the spiritual energy. For this reason, he is called marginal energy. Being in the marginal position, he is sometimes attracted by the external illusory energy and this is the beginning of his material life. When he enters the material energy, he is subjected to the threefold time measurement, past, present, and future. Past, present, and future belong only to the material world. They do not exist in the spiritual world. The living entity is eternal, and he existed before the creation of this material world. Unfortunately, he has forgotten his relationship with Krishna. The living entity's forgetfulness is described herein as anadi, which indicates that it has existed since time immemorial. One should understand that due to his desire to enjoy himself in, com in competition with Krishna, the living entity comes into material existence. Text 118 In the material condition, the living entity is sometimes raised to higher planetary systems and material prosperity and sometimes drowned in a hellish condition. His state is exactly like that of a criminal whom a king punishes by submerging him in water 
and then raising him again from the water. Purport. In the Brihad Haranyaka Upanishad 4.3.16 it is stated Asango Yayam Purusha The living entity is always free from the contamination of the material world. One who is not materially infected and who does not forget Krishna as his master is called Nitya Mukta. In other words, one who is eternally liberated from material contamination is called Nitya Mukta. From time immemorial, the Nitya Mukta living entity has always been a devotee of Krishna and his only attempt has been to serve Krishna. Thus, he never forgets his eternal, serv ser eternal servitorship to Krishna. Any living entity who forgets his eternal relationship with Krishna is under the sway of the material condition. Bereft of the Lord's transcendental loving service, he is subjected to the reactions of fruitive activity. When he is elevated to the higher planetary systems due to worldly pious activities, he considers himself well situated. But when he is subjected to punishment, he thinks himself improperly situated. Thus, material nature awards and punishes the living entity. When the living entity is materially opulent, material nature is rewarding him. When he is materially embarrassed, material nature is punishing him. 119 Bayam Dvitiya binibi shatak syad e shat apetasya bipar yayos mitihi tan ma yayato buddha abjayetam bhaktyai kashi bhaktyai kashyesham guru devanatma devatatma sorry when the living entity is attracted by the material energy which is separate from Krishna, he is overpowered by fear. Because he is separated from the Supreme Personality of Godhead by the material energy, his conception of life is reversed. In other words, instead of being the eternal servant of Krishna, he becomes Krishna's competitor. This is called Viparyayo Smritihi. To nullify this mistake, one who is actually learned and advanced worships the Supreme Personality of Godhead as his spiritual master, worshipful deity and source of life. He thus worships the Lord by the process of unalloyed devotional service. PURPORT This is a quotation from Srimad Bhagavatam 11.2.37 it is an instruction given by Kabi Rishi, one of the nine saintly personalities called the nine Yogendras. When Vasudev, Krishna's father, asked Devarsha Narada in Dwaraka about devotional service, it was mentioned that previously King Nimi, who was the king of Videha, was instructed by the nine Yogendras. When Sri Narada Muni discoursed on Bhagavad Dharma, devotional service. He indicated how a conditioned soul can be liberated by engaging in the loving transcendental service of the Lord. The Lord is the super soul, spiritual master, and worshipable deity of all conditioned souls. Not only is Krishna the supreme worshipful de deity for all living entities, but he is also the guru or chaitya guru the super soul who always gives the living entity good counsel. Unfortunately, the living entity neglects the Supreme Person's instructions. He thus identifies with the material energy and is consequently overpowered by a kind of fear resulting from accepting himself as the material body and considering paraphernalia 
related to the material body to be his property. All types of fruitive results actually come from the spirit soul, but because he has forgotten his real duty, he is embarrassed by many material consequences as, such as fear and attachment. The only remedy is to revert to the service of the Lord and thus be saved from material nature's unwanted harassment. Hare Krishna. So I'll stop here. If there's any uh, comments or reflections or discussion? First comment tonight is from Krishna Kata Das. Haribo Krishna Kata. Hope everything is over there okay in California and you didn't get burned down in your spot. <coughs> he says, Hare Krishna Gurudev, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. From Vibhu Sharma. Vibhu Sharma. Hare Krishna Maharaj, it looks like this is the formula of detachment. The what? The formula of detachment. Yes. It is correct. Detachment from material nature and attachment to Krishna are one and the same thing. They're like the other two sides of the coin. <clears throat> As your detachment from material energy decreases, your attachment for Krishna increases and vice versa. As you forget Krishna, then you become attached to material nature. That's the secret of detachment and the goal of detachment. This is from Brian Phillips. Hare Krishna Bhakti Brian. He says, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. Thank you for bringing this nectar to us. Priceless. All glories to Srila Prabhupada. Yes, it is priceless, especially these te teachings to Sanatana Goswami. They, they give the whole philosophy in depth. He also says, thank you for bringing us this wonderful opportunity to receive this nectar. Hare Krishna. Another comment from Krishna Kata. Mm. He says, nice warning and reassurance. Text 99, end of purport. Quote, Sanatana Goswami in the association of materialists. He also fell victim to material enjoyment. Having passed his life in that way, he considered that he had wasted his valuable time. Everyone is enjoying material life by committing the four basic sins. Although they are fallen, if they simply submit themselves at the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they will be saved from sinful reactions. Correct. <laughs> Thank you. Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi writes, Hare Krishna Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, all glories to Srila Prabhupada, all glories to all the assembled devotees. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Another comment from Sudevi Dasi. Hare Krishna Sudevi Dasi. She says, Jai Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances, glories to Srila Prabhupada. The misery of losing a relative indeed makes me suffer greatly. 
on the list of all miseries, this is one one of the hardest to deal with. This one is hardest to deal with. However, having received Lord Chaitanya's mercy, I do find relief in Krishna consciousness. Sri the Prabhupada's books, your daily reading. Well, when you leave, when you lose a dear relative, especially if they're, if they if they go from natural circumstances in, in old age or whatever, generally people leave, leave like that from some kind of disease or some kind of suffering from old age, then it's better to think of how they're becoming relieved of suffering condition. Because otherwise it's too thinking of oneself. It's not thinking so much of the, of the person and how the person you know, benefits by being able to get out of an older and, and worn out body and, and getting relief from that suffering. So if you think positively like that about about your about your the, the dear relative who's passed away, then you will get relief. From Vrajaloka Devi Dasi. Yeah, I'm Vrajaloka. She says, Hare Krishna, dear Guru Maharaj, please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Sri the Prabhupada. All glories to you. All glories to your daily readings which are giving real shelter. I like that point which was mentioned in verse 94. If I understood well, Sanatana Goswami got the mercy of the Lord because of his high level devotion and renunciation for material attachments. And by that mercy he became able to inquire from Lord Chaitanya. If I understand correctly, it also means that our development in the spiritual life depends almost entirely on the Lord. Without His grace, we have no spiritual strength and we cannot even ask about the Absolute Truth. How should we understand this point, that the ability of inquiring comes from the Lord's blessing in connection with our own spiritual life? It comes from spiritual strength. And the spiritual strength comes from following the regulated principles strictly. When you follow the regulated principle strictly, then you get spiritual strength. And then when you have a daily strict sadhana, time that's dedicated to hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord in your japa and in hearing the scriptures, associating with devotees, preaching Krishna consciousness, all these things, uh, they you can do those things when you have spiritual strength. And the spiritual strength comes from the basics, from following, following the basics very strongly. And Sanatana Goswami is following the basics very strongly, but he's following them in a very, very exemplary way. He's the, the extreme of renunciation. That's not for everybody, and it's, that doesn't mean that you have to become like him to get the mercy of the Lord and to be able to inquire. We shouldn't think that you know we can imitate personalities like Sanatan, Rupa Goswami, Haridas Thakur, this in Raghunath Das Goswami, these exemplary sadhakas and uh, especially exemplary in their uh, degree of renunciation. Hardly anybody can do that. We can't imitate at all. But in the Kali Yuga, at this time, with it, in this disturbed state, especially the world that now is so turned upside down with this COVID virus, this, this uh, obvious karmic retribution for the whole world, all at once everybody's getting you know, reactions from all of their s sinful activities and abuse of one another abuse of the earth so if, if you if we learn to act in, in in harmony with Krishna's instructions in harmony with the desires and instructions of Lord Chaitanya then we get spiritual strength and that spiritual strength gives us the capacity to inquire deeper and deeper and deeper there's no end to it 
there's no end to how we can advance in spiritual life. It's unlimited. We can keep advancing and advancing eternally. In the spiritual world, that's all we do. Hare Krishna. Rati Manjari says Jai Guru Maharaj back to reality. Back to reality. Uh, there's a comment from Krishna Premavati Devi Dasi. She says, I am not qualified on doing anything like singing, distributing books, preaching, or other significant service in the mission of Srila Prabhupada. But I do love to chant the holy names and I do love to hear the pastimes of Lord Krishna and Lord Chaitanya. Is this not enough to go back to Godhead? If not, how can I know what I should be aspiring to do more? And how to get the inspiration, faith, and self-confidence. The goal of all other activities is to get a taste for hearing and chanting the holy names and holy pastimes of the Lord. But when you have this nectar, it's natural to want to share it with others. When you get something very wonderful, or if you're experiencing something very wonderful, then just like a child, they're playing and they see some nice special flower, rock or something, they'll bring it to their mother and show, look, look at, look, mommy, look at this. They want to sh share their, their experiences. So that's all, according to our capacity. We, we shouldn't think you have to be a big book distributor, you have to be a big preacher, you have to do this or that. You can do any, any little service that's sincere to this Christian consciousness movement. In especially hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord and chanting the, the Lord's holy name. That is pure devotional service. That's the goal of pure devotional service. A pure Vaishna have, has nothing, no, no business other than hearing and chanting the glories of the Lord. And if he has to deal with the material energy, he deals with it in a way to learn the, 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 the things that can be uh, said to to help others in their spiritual lives. So it, there's no quantitative need. It's not like a bank balance that the, or a business that the more money you have, then the more successful you are. It's not like that. The more love you have for Krishna, the more successful you are. Hare Krishna. From uh, Kuru. He says Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Kuru. Stefano also says Hare Krishna. Well, Hare Krishna, Stefano. And Krishna Premavati says, Thank you for the reading, Maharaj. Always very instructive and encouraging. Thank you so much, everybody. Thank you very much. I'm going to go now, and uh, I have some things that I have to do. Uh, yeah. Sri Chaitanya Charitamrita Ki Jai. The teachings of Sanatana Goswami, I mean Chaitanya Mahaprabhu to Sanatana Goswami Ki Jai. Samabheda Bhaktivinda Ki Jai. Gaur Premanandi Hari Hari Bo. All glories to all of your service for hearing the Chaitanya Charitamrita every day. See you tomorrow night, same place, same station, same subject. Hare Krishna.